while our politicians from the local and federal level spend us into oblivion and our police services are being obliterated and services are being cut. They talk about taking our guns. We must no longer accept the falsehood nor reinforce it by calling our good, decent, brave men and women who wear blue on our city streets. We must not call them first responders anymore. It's time for America to remember what the Carter administration began to teach was not true. It was the Carter administration that started to teach us that they were the first responders. Up until that time, we knew we were the first responders. They were our backup. When there is trouble, when there is trouble, let us be the first on the scene to help. Let us be the first responder when someone is sick or hungry or frightened. Let us be the first to share our bread with the hungry. Let us be the first to open our hearts to the homeless and the poor. Let us be the first to remove the yoke of injustice. Let us be the first to tell the truth again. I don't know what you will choose. I don't know what America will choose. But for me and my family, I choose to stand with courage. I choose to stand with selflessness. I choose to stand with God. As Lincoln said, with malice toward none and charity toward all, because that's who we really are. Forget what the media says. Forget the names the media calls you. That's who you really are. Our freedom is under attack. Our liberty, our way of life is being legislated out of existence. Our rights are being diminished by a ruling class of power of elites. They're growing out of control. We are in a precarious situation. We are. The hour grows late. We have a government that is now run by radical revolutionaries actively working against the Constitution and the American people. There are politicians in the government, both Democrat and Republican, who still, if they're not involved, still don't even understand what they're dealing with. They are dealing with a different kind of enemy, and they are playing for the stakes of the world. They're not tinkering around the edges anymore. They are going after the very core of America because they know if you lose the Second Amendment, you certainly lose the First and the Fourth and the Fifth, the right to a grand jury in the Tenth and the Fourteenth and the Nineteenth, and all in the end you'll be left with is the income tax. <laughs> Maybe if you're lucky they also still won't quarter any soldiers in your house, I'm not sure. Charlton Heston stood. He stood in 1976 and he said, out of my cold, dead hands. He drew the law, the line in the sand. He said, I will not give up my weapon. I will not comply. I will stand and fight. But we have to define what a fight means. And it must allow us to remain true to who we are. Tonight, let a new chapter of the fight for liberty begin. And let it not be defined by that one line out of our cold, dead hands. But instead, let it be defined by the hearts of good people, the active minds of a free people, the actions of a righteous people. Because it's about who we are. We're Americans, and it's time to be proud to be American again and carry a cause that is greater than ourselves again. It is time now to no longer run from labels or fear them. Instead, embrace those things that will only be the life preserver and the only life preserver of any value. Let us declare without shame, yes, Yes, Mr. President, I will cling to my God and my guns because he is my rock and they are central to our foundation.
In the coming days, I will announce an effort. In the coming days, I am going to announce an effort with major partners who know the time of the day, and I hope you and the NRA will join me. We must begin to teach the American people about civil rights and how to stand with civil rights with the same vigor and discipline that was taught to my good friend Alveda King by her uncle Martin. We must learn what it means to passively resist. Let us resist with the Judeo-Christian tradition. It's what the Underground Railroad and the lunch counters and Tiananmen Square was all about. Most God-fearing, hard-working Americans have always associated things like peace activists or sit-ins or resistance with pot-smoking naked hippies. But by doing so, we have dismissed their power and their true roots because the media has taken and taken the 1960s and made the cultural icon of that decade the naked hippie, we miss the truth of what truly moved us forward as a people. It wasn't free love. Free love has nothing to do with freedom or love that had been made just into sex. The true and powerful meaning of the 1960s was that God demands equal justice and equal rights for all of his children. That was the center of the Martin Luther King movement. That and that alone, and that is the torch we must pick up again. We must not respond in kind by getting angry or playing dirty or by calling people names or striking out because that's not who we are. We know who they are and we choose not to be like them. Let's not give that satisfaction to them or the media that quite frankly has already written that story. We're better than that. We are the law-abiding, God-fearing members of the NRA. We are Americans and we will be clear. We will stand. We'll march if we have to. We'll stand because we must, but we will not be moved. Our right to keep and bear arms will not be infringed. We will follow the footsteps of Jesus Christ. We will follow the footsteps of Frederick Douglass, Winston Churchill, Thomas Paine, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Ben Gurion, Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan, Gandhi, Thomas Jefferson, and Martin Luther King. Hear me now. Hear me now. We shall overcome. Let us not talk anymore about our cold, dead hands, but rather act. Rather be the people who have a cause to use our hands. It is not the gun or the knife, or as Cain discovered with Abel the rock, but the heart that is filled with error, darkness, and coldness. That's what the problem is. So we will use our hands and we will use our hearts to lift up, to learn, to teach, to help, to heal, to protect. We will work side by side with white, black, Hispanic, Native American, off-planeters, whatever, because we don't see those divisions. We will work together as Americans, not only to preserve our rights, but the rights of our children to be safe, our wives and our daughters to not be held at gunpoint, to not be raped, and our most precious valuables of all, our children. We will stand so our children have the right to survive a simple walk down a city street or, God forbid, a day of public education. It is not our cold, dead hands that will win this. But as always, when it comes to American victories, it will be our, our strong backs, our strong will, the ability to adapt and learn. It will be our warm hearts filled with love and charity for all men that will compel us to defend all men's right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 
Churchill said, we shall not falter, we shall not fail. I'll tell you that if America fails or falters, the entire world will fall into darkness. So I will add, we cannot falter, we cannot fail. We will not be the generation that historians look back to and say, what happened to these people? We will not be the generation that loses mankind's freedom. Instead, let us declare to one another that we instead will be the generation that historians look back to with awe and wonder and say, how did they do it? They look back for inspiration that even in our darkest times with the greatest reason for doubt and fear, we rose above it. We pushed the darkness back. We held the torch of liberty. We held it high for all men to see and aspire to. I will not move because I know the ultimate truth, because I am on the side of nature's God and nature's laws. Jesus was a man of love. He was a man of peace. He was a man of forgiveness. But make no mistake, Jesus Christ was also immovable. The right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And we will win by strapping on the full armor of God. We shall stand firm with the belt of truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, with the shield of faith, with the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. We will fight their tactics of fear. We will fight their tactics of darkness. We will fight their lies and we will counter them with love, peace, and equal justice for all mankind. Thank you.